Number 34. The isotope thallium-208 undergoes beta decay with a half-life of 3.1 minutes. And then we have this question. So it says, what percentage of the sample of pure thallium-208 remains undecayed after 1.0 hours? Okay, so here we go, right? Part three, I think, of this question. But if you're coming right in, hello, let's answer this question. Now, we definitely know that we're dealing with radioactive decay. I do see that we're dealing with one um, element or one atom isotope. And they clearly say that here we're doing beta decay, any type of decay, alpha, beta, um, positron, that's all radioactive decay. Now, just know that any type of radioactive decay, I don't care what the element is, right? If they want to give me thallium, sure. They want to give me, I don't know, uranium, sure. They want to give me carbon, sure. Any type of radioactive decay always abides by first order kinetics. There's no exception. First order kinetics. Now in your kinetics chapter, you definitely learn two formulas which are down here that is the first order kinetics. And when you do when you do um, nuclear chemistry, which is this chapter, they try to throw you different formulas. But I say, if you already learned the formulas, just know those. You don't need to memorize different formulas just because it's a different chapter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those first order kinetic equations that we already learned from that chapter and just use them here because there's no exception. It's always gonna undergo first order kinetics. Now, in this, I am adding the rate constant here, which is the K value. Um, if you wanna know where this value came from, you could always check out 34B in the playlist where I did the actual math to find this out. Now, basically what we did was we use this formula, we use the half-life formula to find out that K value because they told us that the half-life was 3.1 minutes. So if I just do the quick division here, 0.693 divided by the half-life, if we just rearrange the formula, you would get close to 0.2235 and then I round it. But I'll use this value um, when we're doing the math. Now the actual question here is asking for what's the percentage of that sample that is remaining, right? And it's going to remain, it's going to be undecayed. We want to find out a percentage, so that means that we want to find out an amount. Now when you want to find out an amount for your first order kinetics, always use this formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up this formula. Uh, let me see. Whoop. What am I doing? This guy. And I'm just going to take this away uh, because we already just quickly discussed that other formula that we used. Okay. Now, if we want to find out that percentage, we want to find out the final amount, the final percentage. And there's two spots for percentage, right? There's always this, which is in brackets the A, and then this one that has an A0. This is talking always about your initial amount because zero means that zero time has elapsed. So it has to be initial. On the flip side, this one is your final amount. Now, the great thing about this formula is that you can use percents, you can use fractions, you can use molarities. So in here, since they're asking for a percentage, I'm going straight in, right? If we wanna find out that percentage that remains, I wanna find out the final amount. So this is gonna be my X value, which means that I should know the K, the T, and the initial amount. But if we're dealing with percents, what is the initial amount for a percent? The biggest percentage, right? It's 100%. That means that the sample wasn't touched. So even though they didn't tell you the number, context is that the largest percentage of the sample would be 100% because none of it decayed. Now, we did discuss the rate constant. That's the 0 0.22355. And now, the T is the random time that has elapsed. And in our case, they say, what percentage of the sample remains undecayed after one hour? So that's the time. But now, here comes the thing. Always watch out for your units. 
if the half-life was in minutes, right, and the K value was in per minutes, I can't use an hour for my T. The units have to match. So if I'm using minutes, I just got to take that one hour and convert it into minutes. But how do we go from an hour to a minute? You know, times it by 60. So one hour just equals 60 minutes. And now you got a 60 down here. Now let's plug everything in and solve for this x value. So we got ln, and I'm just going to do the blueprint first, because I want to put in those colors, plus ln of something, OK? So we got ln of x whee, equals the negative 0 0.2. 22355 times the 60 minutes plus the ln of 100. Now, if you have the beautiful TI-84, TI-84+, plus, or a TI-89, or any type of graphing calculator, calculator, <laughs> calculator, you can plug this all into the calci in one shot. Um, but if you want to do the ln of 100, do this multiplication, add those two together, that's fine with me as well we should get the same answer at the end. So let's see, ln of the x value is negative 0 0.22355, 22355 times 60, oh boy, times 60 plus the ln, the natural log of 100. Just making sure I plugged in all the values. Oh, you know what I should have done? I'll take this whole number. So we'll say negative, oh boy, Okay, starting fresh. Negative, this is the actual long k value, times 60, I did it again, plus ln of 100. All right, now I'm just gonna look back, times 60 plus, that looks good. Okay, so now we have a negative 8.8077. Let's undo the natural log, which is the inverse which is e. So this cancels out, and now we're just going to do e raised to that value, and then we get the x value, which is the percentage. So e, where is e? Second ln, take that whole value. Oh yeah, there it is. So 1.4, I don't know, 1.5? times 10 to the negative fourth. So what were we solving for? We were solving for the final amount in a percentage. So only this amount left is remaining. That's crazy. But I mean, it kind of makes sense. If your half-life is 3.1 minutes, that means every 3.1 minutes, that sample's breaking in half. And then another 3.1, you get a half of that, and then a half of that. And we're talking about an hour, so that's a lot of halves being broken down. So it makes sense that at the end of the day, you would have a very low amount left. And that's it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so, so, so much for all your support throughout this whole journey. And I'm so glad that we can help you guys out on your homeworks, your quizzes, your tests. I love reading your comments. I read every one of them. Um, I try to get back to as many as I can in my spare time. So thank you so much. And I hope you're doing well out there. If you want to become a member to the channel, we just opened memberships up. Um, there's four different tiers. So maybe one will suit your fancy. But if not, that's okay. Um, I hope you have a great day. Whoop, whoop. I'll see you soon. Well, not see you, but I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.